In this week's screencast, we'll be talking about Python imports, various ways of importing, as well as what actually happens when you import, introducing a few things that might be useful when dealing with modules, such as sysmodules and the dir command, as well as dealing with layouts with respect to the init.py and what you can do to make your imports that much nicer when creating your own modules. As you may notice, there's a lot more code than we usually have for particular projects. This week, I've decided to include a uh, Django project that I open sourced a couple years ago. This was done in a two-day sprint two years ago at a Django Dash. So I've spent a little bit of time earlier today re-cleaning this application up so it actually runs. We're going to be revamping this application through the next few screencasts. I'm going to show you things like testing and stuff like that. Today's the first day we're going to be using it, and it's going to mostly be used, for examples, when dealing with imports. So that's just a heads up. You can see the project up on GitHub. It is called Courtside. Simple Django application. There's instructions to get it installed, and I will be updating it through various screencasts. All the commits I've made recently are just to get it up and running, like adding a proc file, which we'll discuss on how to deploy things on Heroku. And if anybody has any particular thing they'd like me to focus in on, please send me an email at admin.neckbeardrepublic.com. So let's quickly launch up a Python interpreter and see what we're talking about here. So when you do import, there's a simple statement you write at the top of your file to get some extra functionality contained in different modules. So for example, if we're to import a module called module, you're going to get an import error saying that there's no module named module. Now, in the case that we do have a module that does exist, the import goes through fine, passes through. But what actually happened here? So let's just quickly back out and run another interpreter. So we've reset everything back to whatever is in our Sith path. And we're going to import sys now. And then we're going to go sys.modules. As you can see, various things from my virtual env have been passed in. So you can see that Python library, standard library stuff have been brought in. You can see that there are things that courtside depends on have been passed in since I ran the interpreter from the root directory of courtside. Um, so let's import DeLorean again now. So as you can see, it's you can't, there's nowhere to be found now. We're gonna do that. And then we're gonna run system modules again. So as you can see, this is bloated much larger than before. So by that simple import of DeLorean, what happened was that DeLorean depends on PY library called PYTZ, as well as another library called Python date util, which it uses internally to get things done. So as you can see here, those are both imported into our syspath, our sysmodules path, so that we know when DeLorean calls something, it can rely on that particular thing. So as you can see, PYTZ, date util, so on and so forth. You just have to take my word for it because it's quite blurry here, but that's that. So what actually happens to our scope though? So with dir, which is an interesting command, lets us know what can be called on a particular object. And if nothing is passed in, it shows us our particular scope. So when dealing with scope things, you can see that I've imported DeLorean and sys, which are two different modules that are provided sys and prior added in Python standard lib. DeLorean is a library that I wrote that's installed currently in our virtual env, which is in our system path. There you go. So dir is really handy when doing stuff like that. You can also call dir on things like DeLorean. And that'll let me know what particular things that DeLorean imported when that, that happened. So you can see that there are the daily versions of particular types of variables, as you can see here, a couple of exceptions, and a couple of functions that I deemed should be around or should be available when you import DeLorean. So the main thing that we want to see, though, is that the DeLorean, actual DeLorean object is there. So that's what we're going to actually end up doing stuff with. So in order to get access to that, we have to go DeLorean, DeLorean, and that returns a daytime object called DeLorean. Now, if we were to go ahead and get out of here again and come back in, what we could do without having to bloat all of our path, what we could do simply is just go import from DeLorean. So from our module DeLorean, import the DeLorean class. And that what that does is simply pass the class and put that in our scope. So 
as you can see, the DeLorean module is no longer here. All you see is the DeLorean class that's being passed in. So in our, but again, you have to remember that DeLorean is part of a module, and that module needs to be included for DeLorean to be actually used. So when we take a look at, oops, we're gonna have to import sys again. We're gonna go sys.modules. You'll see that it imported everything that it did when it was using when it was using DeLorean, when we did the import for DeLorean. So that's another way. The from syntax allows us to import the module into our sys thing, but not have the whole module in our scope, just what we asked for in our scope. So you could say a similar thing here for importing multiple things from the particular library. So as we saw before, we had from DeLorean import, we had an hourly syntax there too. So when we do our dir now, you'll see that DeLorean and the hourly variable are both in our syntax too. You can do these on multiple lines as well. You can do something like this even. That's also legal. So that's the reason why you would want to use from. It minimizes the scope and allows you to target in on things you only need. Now the converse of this particular thing is DeLorean import, import star. Now what this does, it bloats our scope and imports everything that DeLorean in it initializes or contains that isn't that doesn't begin with an underscore and that's just a syntax that's generally enforced in the python community so now when we do dir you'll see that we have all the things that we had when we did the import for the import the direct import like we did previously so you really really should not ever do something like this import star this will just bloat your space and if you have multiple of these in succession these will overwrite different types of things. So for example, if I were to redefine in another package what hourly meant, that the one that was imported most recently will be the one that hourly is set to, which can lead to a bunch of hairy issues and complex headaches. Now another way of importing is like so. So you can do, start up another terminal just so we're clear. I'm going to go import sys. We're also going to do something a little bit like this. We're going to call this DeLorean. A variable called DeLorean and we're going to go is equal to dunder import dunder and then you pass the string name of the module you want to import so we're going to go DeLorean dot DeLorean dot DeLorean and that is the path from the DeLorean package to the DeLorean class Nope, goofed up there. You can only do this like this. Like so. So when we do our dir, you will have DeLorean in the thing. And you also have in your sys modules, modules, the entirety of the scope as well. So those are a few ways to import. And generally, a good way to keep your imports together so they aren't bloating or blowing up your stack. And you want to keep your whatever is in scope, as clean as possible, and your sys modules will be maintained on your own, but it's a good way to look when you're having issues when debugging. Another thing with that particular import style, what it allows you to do is something like this. So let's quickly just get out of here real fast. Um, let's go back in. So we're gonna go import sys, and then we're going to go, foo is equal to a string called DeLorean. And then we're going to go DeLorean is equal to Dunder import. Foo. So when we go dir, we have DeLorean. So we can go DeLorean dot DeLorean. And that'll give us the object that we asked for. Now, the thing that you need to notice there is, so that foo you can ignore here because we're in an interpreter. So anything that gets put here, it's in our scope. So that makes sense. But what the interesting thing here is that we use the string to initialize the import. This is kind of useful for things when you need to dynamically import things and you're not particularly sure what needs to be imported. So you could have like a dictionary of various objects like so. You could have uh, foo and that is equal to DeLorean, and then you can have some type of lookup look up when doing imports. And that's the real use of that type of import. There's another way to do it in import lib, which I think is called import module. 
provides the same functionality which I would suggest that you use but that is another talk altogether another thing to note with the form syntax if you do something like this we're gonna go back into the Python interpreter we're going to go from DeLorean import DeLorean so when you do your dir there is no DeLorean object there so when you do anything like this you know that the module is not in scope either so that's the whole difference now so you'd have to do something like this and then you'd call the object is no longer there next thing we want to look into is relative imports and absolute imports now in Python 3 implicit relative imports and packages are no longer available you are only allowed to have absolute imports and explicit relative imports are supported so there's a slight nuance there I'm going to go on to explain that so let's quick take a quick look at our forms file as you can see it goes into the register module and goes into the models file and imports a couple of models okay no big deal it's very simple very straightforward the way you know something is a module if it has its own init.py modules are generally folders with init.pys with python code under them so let's say for example we had a models file here so we'll call this models.py we're going to save that let's say we had some things here let's quickly define one um, animals models dot model these will have a name is equal to models Okay. Report models. So that's how we have it. Okay. Basically, just animals with names. So let's say we wanted to import that from our forms file. So it's in the same directory. So we'd go from models import animals and then we could save and create animals we'd have all the things that we could do to animals now this is what they call a relative import it's relative to where the forms is so when it goes to look to see where models is it goes okay hey, I'm here here is where models is now that's what you'd call a relative import an a implicit relative import it's implicitly saying it's the one that's next to me now in Python 3 that is no longer allowed. What you have to do is do this. I have to saying in this directory, the models file, import animals. And that is the difference between uh, an implicit relative import and an explicit relative import, or absolute imports, which are the actual path to the particular thing that you want to import. So, for example, as you can see here, these are absolute imports. From the registry module, import models and import these two different things. So that's a slight nuance that you need to keep an eye out for because if you don't, what happens is it goes through the path looking for which the first models it hits. If it hits multiple ones, it causes problems and it can create issues. So be as explicit as you can, as much as you can. Next, I would like to illustrate the example of a circular import. So you'll see on the left that I have a function called, or a file called bar.py, which imports foo, which is on the, the right-hand side here. You'll see that I define a function called hello in this method. And on this side, we have foo.py where we import hello from bar, which is the file we're just in. We return hello and we print whatever main returns, which should be hello in this case. So let's just quickly run this. So let's run foo.py. Foo.py. You'll see that it can't import hello for some reason why is that so if you notice here that the first thing we do when we run bar is we go import foo what that does it goes over here and goes okay import bar from hello it goes back here hits the first thing it goes hey import foo goes back here so we have a circular import that's constantly going circular here which is something we need to stop from happening now this is just an unnecessary import that I use to show to illustrate the problem so let's by quickly just deleting this what should happen it goes from bar import hello loads the thing hits hello loads it main should come back through and prints the thing and we have hello on our screen 
So let's quickly just do that again. Oh, did I not write the changes? Let's go back. Um, we need to write. Excellent. Now let's go back. Run the file again. And then we have hello. So circular imports are of things of that nature. Usually a few ways of solving it is either move your import inside the function you're calling. So if your global namespace is causing the conflict. Or what you can do is reorganize your code structure so that the circular import no longer happens. This usually happens when you have utility functions that are being used in multiple spots and somehow you have something referring and importing multiple things. So generally keep a track of how your import's going and this is easiestly done by explicitly importing everything you need. So then you can just go through one by one looking at your imports and then finding the circular import. So this concludes our talk on Python imports and importing with Python. Hopefully you learned a couple of things with SysModule and Dir that will allow you to inspect your scope, as well as a few tips and tricks on how to import implicitly and explicitly.